Hey, John Cristani here, and I want to talk to you about something a little different than what I normally talk about, but I've been trying the keto diet the last 60 days, and I'm going to be going over my experience of what happened, and I'll also be talking to you about the foods I was eating, as well as the pros and cons of this kind of new fad diet that maybe you've been hearing about lately. So get strapped in, get ready, let's get into it. So for the last 60 days, I tried the keto diet and I made a big decision because I'd gained a little bit of weight last year. I, I don't know, some of my longtime followers may have noticed that, you know, I started getting comments, yo, you're getting chubby or, oh, you have a little pooch, <laughs> which is kind of funny. But I just figured I was going to try one of the more extreme diets I'd heard of, which was the keto diet. And it's a very restrictive diet if you haven't heard about it. I'm going to go over the foods in just a second here, but I figured I'd give it a try, give it a shot, and just see what happens. Now, if you don't know what the keto diet is, I kind of put what the good foods you can eat and the stuff you really can't eat on the keto diet on this board. So the way the keto diet works is you eat a lot of fats, okay? The diet is supposed to be, I think, 70% fats, 20% protein, 10% carbs, or something like that. But really, it's just a lot, a lot of fats right here. To really do this is you eat a lot of meats, a lot of nuts, and a lot of veggies, okay? Veggies such as, I don't know if avocado is a veggie, but veggies don't have a lot of anything in them, so they're generally fine to eat. But meat, nuts, and veggies. Whereas the stuff you can't eat on the keto diet, carbs. Carbs is the biggest thing. You just don't eat carbs. And carbs include breads, they include tortillas, they include pastas, they include muffins, they include croissants, they include sugars and fruits. So don't eat apples, don't eat oranges, don't eat mangoes, don't eat anything with sugar in it, M&Ms, et cetera. Burger buns, fries. It's just super restrictive. You don't eat tortilla chips. There's just so many things you can't eat when you cut out breads and carbs, which is why keto diet has a reputation for being very restrictive. Now, I tried out this diet and frankly, my results after 60 days, I started with a weight of 175 pounds. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, I am 5'10". Okay, so this is what I started the keto diet at, and where I ended up is I dropped two inches in the, no, I actually, I'm joking. Screw that out, bad joke. But I actually, after two months, I got down to 160 pounds. So two months or 60 days on the keto diet, I lost 15 pounds, which is actually quite incredible. And I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons, and I'll be going over whether I'm continuing the keto diet towards the end of the video. But when I started out the keto diet, what I did was I started out with just cutting out little things here and there. So I'd go get a hamburger, I'd go to Fat Burger or Five Guys, and I would cut out one carb. So I'd cut out fries. And that was very hard for me to cut out fries. I love fries. But I'd still eat the burger with the bun on it. And I'd do that everywhere I went. For instance, I'd go to Chipotle. I love Chipotle. Who's a fan of Chipotle? Type in Chipotle down in the comments if you love Chipotle. I'd go to Chipotle and I'd order a burrito with rice in it, right? I ate the brown rice. And I'd cut out the rice because rice is a car. And slowly but surely, I started cutting out things. And that was the first week. Then the second week, what I did was I cut out the tortilla. So I'd just have a burrito bowl or I'd go to get a burger and I'd just have a burger on a bed of lettuce, what's called protein style. So I'm just having burger and lettuce leaves on top and bottom. It took me two weeks to really get into the diet where I was just totally cut off and where I actually was in what's called ketosis. What being in ketosis means that your body is actually burning fats for fuel rather than burning carbs for fuel. Now what you need to know about getting into ketosis is how the body works, how the body fuels itself for energy. So the first thing the body uses, and again, I'm no like scientist or whatever, but basically the first thing your body uses for energy is carbs, okay? So if you eat a lot of carbs, and this is what athletes do, this they'll eat a ton of carbs because carbs provide a lot of energy, but they provide energy bursts and then they also provide downs. So your body uses carbs for energy and stores the fat, stores the protein. But when you cut out carbs out of the equation, 
like the keto diet where you're eating barely any carbs. The keto diet, it's recommended you eat less than 40 grams of carbs per day, okay? Just to give you an idea, that's one soda, okay? One can of Coca-Cola contains 40 grams of sugars in it. So you can't even have a whole Coke, Coca-Cola. So your body starts burning fats for energy then. It's called ketosis and you can actually measure this. You can take a blood sample or you can pee on a strip to tell if your body is burning fats for energy or burning carbs for energy. If you cut out carbs and you cut out fats, what your body would burn for energy is proteins. That's how people shrivel up and die. That's when people look emaciated where literally their muscles start just being melted off of them because their body is getting no nutrition, right? So you gotta focus on fats and you get in this state called ketosis. So this is called the Google Jamboard. It's a new thing I've been using instead of a whiteboard. So let me know if you like it. Jamboard good, Jamboard bad. Let me know in the comments below. So I liken the amount of energy you get on carbs to being kind of a series of ups and downs. You eat carbs and you get tired, but then you get more energy. So it's kind of an up and down cycle. Whereas when you're burning fats for energy, it's much more of a steady kind of burn. Fats burn slower for energy in your body. And I just felt more energy throughout the day. I didn't feel like I was you know, getting lethargic after I ate a big burger. Then I was happy. Fats, they just keep you fuller. They keep you feeling fuller. They burn slower. You don't have to eat as often throughout the day. So I really like being on fats. Now, the next thing is I'll go over the kind of the pros and cons. Now, for weight loss, it's great. Obviously, I was able to lose a lot of weight on the keto diet, which is fantastic, which is my goal of what I'm trying to do. It's also great for focus because of the way that fats burn and because fats are what fuels the brain, burning fats has just helped my focus, it's helped my mental energy and my overall physical energy as well because I'm going through less dips throughout the day. Another reason it helps focus is because it's a restricted diet. I have less things to, kind of less variables to worry about. Instead of waking up each morning and thinking, ooh, where am I gonna eat for lunch? Do I want Chinese food? Do I want orange chicken? Do I want a burrito? Do I want this? Now, if I go to Mexican food, I'm eating fajitas, okay? If I go to American food, I'm getting like meatloaf or something. If I go to Chinese food, I'm just getting chicken. It's been good for my focus. I think about food less each day because I'm just meat, nuts, and veggies, just simple, straight line. And the other thing I really like about it is that it's measurable. I can tell if I'm in ketosis or not. I can pee on a strip and see if I'm doing the diet right or if I'm doing the diet wrong. Whereas other diets, I feel a little more loosey-goosey. You don't know definitively if you're on or off the diet. Now, as for the negatives, the first two weeks of the keto diet kind of suck, okay? Going through a couple days of what is called the keto flu just makes you feel lethargic, okay? It just wasn't fun, you know, just being super lethargic for seemingly no reason. Also, cutting out so many foods that are just normal things that I would eat every day was a bit difficult. It's also very boring. It's a boring diet. Just isn't a lot of stuff to eat. As I said, I go to Mexican food now. It's like fajitas. That's what I eat. I eat fajitas and I eat a lot of guacamole. And it's also just so restrictive. You know, not being able to eat fries just kills me. Not being able to eat pizza kills me. Not being able to eat tacos kills me. Not being able to eat chips or Cheerios at night kills me inside. It's just so sad. You know, I actually found myself one day, I bought a piece of pizza for my daughter. You know, I was at the supermarket at Whole Foods and I was like, I'm just gonna have one bite of her pizza. That's it. That won't put me over my 40 gram a day you know, limit of carbs. And I just wolfed the entire thing down in a matter of seconds. It's hard to stay on. And the other thing about the keto diet is it's expensive. You know, I found that in order to just try to eat keto, you know, I buy a lot of nuts. So check this out. So I eat a lot of macadamia nuts. So I shop at Erewhon now, right? I don't know if anybody else shops at Erewhon, but I shop at Erewhon. Macadamia nuts are pretty expensive, but they're super high in fat. They're a great keto food. And I just been eating a lot of these. I'll eat one or two of these a day, but each of these costs like six bucks each or something like that. Another thing I eat a lot of is I eat a lot of nut butter. Here's some nut butter from RX. And again, these are like two or $3 per pack. It's like 
barely any nut butter, but it's made for the keto diet. Another example of something I have a lot of is Bulletproof coffee. So Bulletproof makes themselves good for the keto diet. This has basically fat in it. It has grass, it has butter in it and MCTs. So they make this for people, you know, on the keto diet. But again, this is expensive and to have a lot of these is expensive. So I've got a lot of keto friendly stuff, but it's much more expensive shopping for it. Other examples of things I eat include, I eat sheep's milk yogurt, specifically plain sheep's milk yogurt, doesn't have a lot of sugar and it's very high in fat, I'll eat that in the morning. I eat Keto Logic, I have Keto Logic shakes, I supplement my diet with BHBs, which are salts, because on the keto diet, you can get depleted of salts. You know, I take an extra salt supplement in the morning and I'll have protein shakes and I'll scoop a lot of fat in them. So another item I eat is Udo's oil. I'll make myself a protein shake but I'll put about 60 grams of fat, so which is about three or four tablespoons of just pure omega-3s fats in my protein shake. So I get a lot of fat and I get that nice flavor of the protein shake. Macadamia nuts, as I said, I eat fajitas, I eat burgers without the bun, I eat meatloaf, I'll eat chicken pot pie without eating the crust. I have tomato bisque soup from BJ's Brewery, but with extra cream in it. I'll have burrito bowls. Chipotle now has keto-friendly burrito bowls. So all of this stuff, that's how I've been on the keto diet. Those are my results. If you have any questions for me about how to do the keto diet or my experience, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos about what I've been doing to kind of hack my focus or hack my health, leave a comment. Just say more health stuff. I'd be happy to share the things I'm doing. So let me know if this makes you more interested in trying the keto diet, say if you're gonna try it, or if you say, ah, doesn't sound like it's for me, type it in below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.